Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Welcome to your favorite podcast. If it's not your favorite podcast yet, it will be by the end of this show because Nate's about to go off. OK, I'm John Radigan. He's Nate Newton. We're brought to you on this podcast by Niagara. And the show, Nate, is called what? Let me tell you something. And believe me, it's a lot of people that have a title, but they can't tell you what me and John Radigan would tell you. We will always be telling you something. Believe that. Yeah, Exciting so, so and me- new. Let me tell you something first, Nate. Yes. I had a busy weekend. I did a Mavs pre and post game. I did wow. a New Orleans Pelicans pre and post wow. game. I did a couple of Oklahoma City Thunder pre and post games. So I, I really wasn't paying attention to the NFL. How'd the Cowboys do? Did they beat Green Bay's butt like we thought they would? Wow. No. Wow. No. That didn't wow. happen, did it, Nate? <laughs> Oh my God. I was so excited because you was excited. You was working and you was doing these free oh, and post, and I was so I excited. You. And you hit me I with that you. red. Wow. Oh, Way to take man. Care. That's a gut kick, man. About like Green Bay man. did to the Cowboys. A kick to oh, the my gut, gosh. my brother. Wow. I don't mean to kick anybody, but man, <laughs> watching that thing, which I really did, uh, was a kick to the gut of anybody who's, you know, a Cowboys follower, a Cowboys fan. I don't know why, Nate, but somehow we kind of felt like, you know, that this playoff season would be different than the others. But really, it wasn't. And in fact, it might have been worse. It's been called, in many circles, the most embarrassing playoff loss the Cowboys have ever suffered. I, one thing that is consistent with the up uh, with the brass, with the coaches, with the players, and most of all with the fans, nobody can put their finger on how to fix this problem. Now we all have used all type of embarrassing. I can't believe it. Wow, what did I just see? You can phrase it however you want. But one thing I've consistently heard for the last few days is, where do we start? How do we fix it? And we, I've gotten a thousand different answers to that simple question. Where do we go? More importantly, how do we fix it? Rad, I'm okay. asking you the same thing. I've, how do yeah. we fix it? So, you know, obviously everybody has an opinion on that. Um, There's certainly one school of thought that says you go ahead and you get rid of Mike McCarthy now. You bring in someone who has proven year in and year out. McCarthy won a Super Bowl, granted, with the Packers. But you, you bring in somebody who has proven year in and year out that, he will get a team ready for a playoff run. And those that camp, that group of people, they really want Bill Belichick, 71, 72-year-old Bill Belichick in here, Nate. So, I mean, is that a, is that a way you want to go? Do you want to start over with a new coach? Is that a place to do this? Do you really want to blow up? A th- you, you go- the Patriots have a a thing they call the Patriots way. Two guys, right? three guys allowed this to happen. They uh, grew this from childhood into maturity. And that Patriots way is kind of falling off. Number one, Mr. Kraft hired and drafted the guy. He hired Bill, Bel- Bill Belichick and he drafted Tom Brady. Those two guys matured that infant of the Patriots way into fruition. Do you want a semblance of that Patriots way to come to the Cowboys? Cause remember Jimmy had it with Troy and his winning ways, the Patriot way 
And the cowboy used to be way was by two guys, Bill Belichick, Jimmy Johnson, Tom Brady, Troy Aikman. Do you want that? Do you want a Bill Belichick slash will it be Dak or another guy? Because this way, there's no second guessing who's the boss is. There's no second guessing how things are going to be ran. There's no by committee. Bill Belichick, quarterback buy-in, rest of the team buy-in. Do you really think Dallas is ready for that? More importantly, do you think the Dallas Cowboys top brass is ready for that? And if you can answer that question, I could tell you whether we should bring Bill Belichick in. Yeah, and and I don't. I don't think that the top brass would like that. I, I think Belichick would would make one quick phone call to Bill Parcells and say how how hard or easy is it to work for Jerry Jones? And I think obviously they're good friends. They were on the same coaching staff together, uh, Parcells, and they had their their you know battles and so forth. But Parcells would be honest with him and and tell him what he thinks, which which I don't think would be extremely favorable to uh, ha- that sort of you know coach GM owner relationship. So the, the the alternative is to either bring somebody else in, or I- I'm starting to think Nate maybe you just let. Uh, both Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott play out the last year. They each have one year left on their contract. The one, the one thing, right, is that we saw uh, the offense. Re- we talked about it last week. The offense grew, like you're talking about, from infancy, right? That when they, yeah. when McCarthy gets in there, calling plays, and he puts that West Coast style offense in there, right? And it didn't look great. At the beginning of the year, it looked really good by the end of the season. It didn't look at all good in the playoffs, but uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe d- do they need more time to let that, as you're talking about, mature and grow up a little bit? This is one thing that you can't you have nothing else to sell to the fans. Right. Listen to me. After the COVID year, 12 and five. Blues in the first round. After the the next year, 12 and 5, win, lose in the next round. Now you fought through the whole year, especially after Philadelphia. You won, won, won. Not only did you win the NFC East, but you had the second seed in the in the whole playoffs, NFC. You had opportunity to be at home twice. I think I was the only guy telling everybody, you better look out. Matt LaFleur and this guy, Jordan Love, offensively, they look good. Yeah. Uh, I just listened to Troy Aikman uh, and Stephen A. uh, do their spiel together. You know, they, they did it two or three days ago, but I listened to it. And Troy was thinking the same way that Matt LaFleur would have this Green Bay team giving us a little trouble in the first half because they understand who the defensive coordinator is because he was assisting up on him during the Super Bowl run. But back to what Uh, you're saying is you're going to have to do some some things here, man. You're going to have to shake some stuff up. And okay. uh, Coach McCarthy has done a fabulous job, but you cannot sell the fans another 12 and 5 in a first round exit. You're going to have to sell the fans something different. And I don't know what that difference is. I don't want Mike McCarthy to leave. I really don't. Because now you're going to bring in a new coach that's going to tweak this and tweak that and tweak this. And do you have the players to do that? Once again, you're asking your quarterback to make a change, to look at things a little bit different. Uh, Before I get away from the quarterback, right quick, like, this is the same quarterback that has not had success in the playoffs. This is the same quarterback. So that's a different discussion a little bit later on. We're talking about Coach McCarthy. 
Does he have another gear? Does he have another tactic? Does he have anything at all left? Brad, I'm asking you. I don't know. I do know that um, the least disruptive way to do this thing, or at least I believe the least disruptive way to do this would be to take one of the hottest coaching prospect names out there, a man who will be interviewing with at least five NFL teams for coaching openings and vacancies this year, who happens to be the defensive coordinator of the Cowboys, Dan Quinn. Now, That was not a great performance by any means by the defense. A, uh, would he be a a, a less disruptive change if you're going to make a change, Nate, for the Cowboys? And B, is he even still really a serious candidate after this last entry on his resume? Not only his last entry, but against the 49ers, (laughs) against the Cardinals, against the first Philadelphia game. Now, he had a hell of a scheme last year against in the playoff loss and the year before he had a hell of a scheme you know again well he wasn't here but he had a hell of a scheme the thing that behooves me and the question you have to ask is if you keep Dan Quinn two things have to be answered will you make stopping the run a priority because that has been the last 10 years of disaster for the Cowboys. Every team that is equal to us in ability are better. Just say, you know what? We can slow down their, de- their offense, and we're going to run on their defense. And by the second quarter, we're going to own their defense because we will have a lead. This team was built on and predicated on having a lead. This team does not have a lead. Its defense does not play well at all. So this is the question you got to ask Coach Quinn. And another question you got to ask Coach Quinn is what's going to happen here if they don't fix it real quick and talk to this kid, number 11, our best defensive player, and find out who he is, what he is, and what he's going to be for this team. Because once he signed this big contract and the way he acts now, It'll be even worse if you sign this big contract because this kid is saying he's a defensive end, you know, and if it suits him, oh, I'll, I'll play wherever. But that whatever is is said in a way where it's very dismissive. Uh, it's very disruptive in his mind. So you got to find out who this kid is, number 11, because he does not show up in games where teams like to run at us. He does not show up. Now, people say it's because he's playing defensive end, da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da, whatever. You know, this kid going to have to know who he is. He's going to have to mature. And that's one of the things Dan Quinn will have to ask himself if he chooses to even interview at all, which I don't think he will for the Dallas Cowboys job. You don't. No, I, nope. I don't. I mean, here – if, if these were new problems that we were yeah. facing, uh, I would say interview. But, but Coach, uh, I love Dan Quinn. Every time I see him, I want to give him a hug. Yeah, uh, great guy. The way he's put us at. You know, <clears throat> unfortunate for us is they have not – Graded the Cowboys on a regular season win since 1968, the year after the Ice Bowl. They have not graded us on regular season wins. It has always been playoffs. Great yeah. quarterbacks have always been connected to us through winning playoff <laughs> games. I didn't create that. I would think, want to thank Tank Schramm for creating yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> Tom, Tom Landry. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to hold that mantle, you know, I, I listen to players who say, if we're going to get where we want to get, son, let me tell you something. You weren't even born when we was getting to where we needed to get. What you yeah. need to do is learn how to win a couple of playoff games. 
and, and see how important that is. But that's another story. I'm sorry, Red. I got a little, a little off track. Yeah. So let's go because we've kind of walked through the yeah. coaching thing, and you basically, like I do, believe right. you, you, you at least let McCarthy have next year. He's got a year on the contract. Right. I'm for keeping status quo there, and I know that's going to be tough to sell the fans. Right. What's even tougher to do, though, would be to um, sell – Everything's the same, right? We're going to keep Dak in his place and Mike McCarthy in his place. However, it's almost as tough to do anything with Dak, Nate, other than extend him and and spread his salary cap hit out over you know multiple years because he's going to cost the team nearly sixty million dollars if they keep the contract as it currently is structured next year. Let me say this right here. Never been in an earthquake. I've had tremors when we went out to San Francisco a couple of times. Yeah, I was never there. Yeah. been in a real earthquake. The Cowboys got an earthquake that's yeah. looming called Dak, Dakota Rain. I'm telling you, it is a quagmire. Fifty nine million dollars. Yeah, if you yeah. were to choose to I'm let him go yeah. next year, fifty. $59 million if you want to keep him on a one-year deal. No C.D. Lamb. He will be hot because he won't be signed. They will not start right. pre-negotiations with uh, Micah Parsons. Micah. Mm -hmm. A lot of the free agents who are uh, J Jordan Lewis, uh, he is going to be gone because you will have he no gone. money. Yeah. Yeah. It will be yeah. like the Milwaukee Bucks are right now. It would be like semi like the Mavericks are right now. Your money is tied up in two, three players, and yeah. uh, and your uh, backups and role players are at a minimum. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys would not mm -hmm. be able to sign no one of significance oh, unless they say, hey, CD, we'll sign you for 25 years. That ain't happening. Hey, Michael, we'll sign you for 45 years. That ain't happening. Yeah. No, no. You're well, stuck. You're right. So that's what we've concluded in the program, Nate, that we need a seismic shift. Yes. <laughs> and yet any seismic shift that we bring up uh, is somewhat distasteful. And this, I guess this is why. You know, Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and, and to whatever extent Jerry Jr. is involved, you know, man, I, they must not be sleeping at all, burning a midnight at all, trying to figure out what the heck to do, because the fan base is just so over all of this, Nate. You, you know, like I said, like when we started the show, <laughs> Brother Rad, I'm telling you, you've been listening to it. Our fans, f fans are so numb right now to... I, I went to work, to, you know, uh, not Monday, but it was a holiday. But I went to work Tuesday. Nobody was upset. Nobody. It's just like the living dead just driving. Everybody's just yeah. driving. Uh, you know, they're, like, they're still in shock, you know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm like and the walking dead. And that's dead. two days later. They have yeah. put the Cowboys. And, I mean, even Stephen A. could not just go off. I mean, because he was like. What what is it to go off about? Yeah, you thoroughly, you thoroughly got beat. It, it, yeah, from snap eleven plays in seven minutes and fifty seconds, in you were down seven. You get the ball. You only move the ball seven plays. You punt the ball. Sam Williams gets a a. a, a Kicker interference. Instead of them starting on the nine, giving our defense some life, they start on the twenty-four. That's a that's a first down and a half. They ain't got any work for. Then they score again. You're down fourteen zip. Then your quarterback come out and throw a pick six. Mm. Wow! Ain't three series mm. later he throws another pick six. You out of the game. Now they well, go into prevent the rest of the the rest of the game. Yeah. 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 And we t we were talking yesterday and I said to you, man, at 27, nothing. I knew it was over. And you said, dude, you said you knew it earlier, I, way earlier. I, I, you know. I have a I, I look at things and this has not changed. 
in the, in the last year, this has not changed. If the Cowboys are down, check the records, seven to nine points going into the second half. I'm talking about against a winning team with equal or better talent and good coaches. Tell me the game they've lost. Tell me, excuse me, tell me the game they've won. The game they've won. Tell yeah, me the game won. where it's seven to nine points against a winning team with equal or better talent and good coaches. Not great coaches, but good coaches. Tell me when the Cowboys have came back and won. Don't tell me about the Colts. Don't yeah, tell me no, about the I, Texans. I'm talking about no. with some show enough fire on their team. We yeah, have not won those I, I games. I can't come up with one. Mm-mm. So mm-hmm. uh, I, when, when they was up seven, nothing, I told the people I was in the press box who was at the same. I told the security people because I sit over there with them because I don't like sitting in the normal press box because I'm going to say something. And I don't want to hear the <laughs> announcer say, due to the Sports Writers Association, we have a quiet booth. So I go over there and sit with the security so we, we be over there talking. So uh, I told them, I said, seven, nothing, y'all. We at least need three. We didn't give them three. When they scored 14, I said, well, I guess I'll, I won't be logging. You know how I many used to be logging back at Fox, logging our stuff and read, you know, going oh, through yeah, the yeah, show and we yeah. writing everything yeah, down. Absolutely. I say, yeah. if they score yeah. again, I'm through logging. They're like, what? I say, if they score again, I'm through logging. So at 14, I was just highlighting stuff. When it was 14 points, I just highlight. If you had a big play, not a big play, a bad play, I went to highlight. I went log and everything. Then they scored 21. I mean, he scored 20 and missed the kick. I said, that's yeah. it, y'all. Done. I said, that's it. I say, uh, y'all might as well go around here and look for irate fans and people that's acting up because <laughs> there's going to be some fights uh, <laughs> yeah. in the stand. Cause they, cause right about now, the Cowboys will have to fight that the yeah. fans do. The fans never no. gave up. The fans never gave up, you know, and I ain't saying the players gave up, but the whooping, the whooping was complete. See, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story. I don't know in your house where I at. And see, I can say this because y'all can't go back and do nothing to my mom and daddy. <laughs> we used to get our behinds whipped. Yeah. yeah, we used to get whipped. And see, I was, I, I'm big. I was big as a yeah. kid. My brothers and sisters was big. So we got whipped. You know, so when them Green Bay Packers, they was whipping us. Yeah, they were. And, when, and, it was, and it was over. So these guys was just trying to show. You ever heard one say, one for the Gipper? Yeah. That's, Get one that's for the one Gipper. for the Gipper. Yeah. Well, after they got down 20 to nothing, then it was 27, 7. It was all about Coach McCarthy then because you done put your head coach, a guy that was coming into the playoffs, he had the safest besides Andy Reid, Mike Tomlin, in which he on the hot seat now. and Those were the two safest coaches, along with Coach McCarthy. It was less than one half, 30 minutes, an hour and a half in, your coach is on the hot seat. Because you decided not to play well. See, I'm not blaming this all on Coach McCarthy. I am not right. doing that. Right. These players, I hope, will take some of this responsibility. So if they do get another coach, you won't put him in this position. Brad. You know. Wow. Uh they uh, at halftime. You were at the game, so you didn't see yeah. this. At halftime, Fox did a really good thing, and right at the end of their halftime report, they went to Jimmy. Oh, I seen on it. a one shot. I seen it, bro. You seen it? Yes, sir. Yeah, he, he, right on a one shot. Right. And you know, you know, yeah. that's how he used to talk to you guys. Now again, it wasn't clean. He had to clean it up for TV. Yeah, he did. He did. He didn't talk about getting your behind out there. You know, he talked about getting your ass out there. <laughs> right. You know, and all. but anyway. But he, I'm looking at him, and he's got the, you know the teeth just sticking yeah. out. Yeah, get out there and do what you can do. And I'm like, man, I'm going out there. And so you saw Strahan yeah. got down to three three point stance. Right. Uh, holy moly, that's what it seemed like they needed. To your point, maybe not get one for the Gipper, but go out there and be men. 
They, you know, they, they didn't, you know, the difference, Nate, between your mom and daddy whipping you as a kid is you can't do nothing about it, right? right? You try to whip daddy's ass, he's going to whip you even harder, <laughs> right. right? The Cowboys had the option. Yes, they they could have whipped back, but they didn't. I, I just, I just believe this right here. I'm not in their locker room. I don't know what is said, what transpires. But you, you're going to have to get guys that, that are held to a higher standard. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I use myself all the time. I wasn't the smartest yeah. guy. In the, I was not the smartest guy. I didn't always have the best common sense. But Troy, Emmett, Mike, Stepnoski, Tony Tolbert, Char guys stayed on me, man. And I had good examples, guys younger than me and older than me that needed to win for their legacy. They wasn't going to let mm -hmm. you mess it up. And if they had to mm -hmm. walk you through every scenario, hey, right here, man, we punting this ball. We got a chance to pin them deep. Let's not do anything crazy. Hey, right here, man, we're down on the one. Hey, man, it's third down. We're going to try to get a hard count. Nate, stay your behind on side. <laughs> I, I mean, do it for the team, bro. Yeah, yes. And, and that, that brings up a really, really important question because what we've discovered here is we have this conundrum. Nobody is really sure how to fix it. And, and this is one, one of those immeasurables, Nate. Right. This is a completely immeasurable thing. No statistic, no analytic can help us with this. But do the Cowboy players have... Are they selecting? Are the Cowboys selecting players that have enough heart, right? It's about what's inside sometimes, right? All these guys are re remarkably talented. You know that. Everybody in the league is silly talented. They were the best player every step of the way where they were. Do they have enough heart, Nate? And if not, how do we infuse that? How do we make control it to, to where they do have that They're heart? called control bullies. The left tackle for... The uh, 49ers, a control bully. Uh, a couple of defensive linemen, control bullies. Preston Smith for the Green Bay Packers, a control bully. A guy that you can, that, that's going to drop the hammer at any time, a control bully. Uh, Kenny Clark, 97. See, these are, you know, like I tell people, next year I'm going to go to the Cowboys and I may just do a podcast by myself. <laughs> because I'm the most people tell you when I'm doing my podcast, I, it, it, I am the biggest cowboy homer. And I, it takes, yeah. let me tell you something, Rad. Let me tell you yeah, something. Please do. If yeah. I didn't love you, it takes all I got to fire you from being a Detroit Lion because you can't split in the NFC. You can't have dual loyalties and say you love my cowboys, but due to the fact, that you move way out in wherever you move to, it saves you, okay? It <laughs> saves you. I cut oh, loose my sister-in-law be because You'd she, be over here with yeah, that whip out on yeah, me, wouldn't you? My sister-in-law said, I'm a yeah. Philadelphia fan and a, and a Cowboy fan. She never got another ticket from me, ever. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're in the NFC, you can only be one thing. You can either be a Detroit fan or you can be a Cowboy fan. AFC, now okay, you can so get I you could, another team. I could be a Bills fan if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, it wouldn't bother me one bit. Wouldn't bother me one okay. bit. But now yeah. I got yeah. I need you. You my you my captain, you my you my quarterback, and you get me in and out of great conversations. So I, I gotta I gotta yeah. make an exception. As Troy Eggman does for I Joe that. as Troy Eggman does for Joe Buck, Joe Buck when he goes goes and does baseball. I gotta make an exception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I get that. And I, and I really do, because uh, I, I've encouraged people, hey, I got a good solution for you. Have another favorite team. But you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's dicey. Yeah, it's, it's dicey. dicey. Yeah, I, I it's live and dicey die with the when, Cowboys. And, and when they're in the same uh, conference, yeah. it's very dicey because they're going to play a lot more. Yes. Right. Yes. Hey, 
Jump on the Texans bandwagon. Mm, no, CJ man, Stroud. I ain't jump. Oh my God, no. Can't do it. No, I can't do it, man. It's too close to the state. It's close, too close to home front. Yeah. But but no, yeah. but what I'm trying to say is this right here. There's no bigger homer than me. Yeah. But my job is not to homerize things. My job is to give you an honest opinion and be open to your thoughts. Now I'm I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm not that teacher. Uh, that person that say every question is a good question. I don't believe that. <laughs> so don't no. ask me nothing stupid. You know, I don't try to, you know, hey, man, well, that's my opinion. Well, your opinion is stupid. So keep it to yourself. Uh, but open, good dialogue, common sense, you know, because we, we ain't going to get rid of both McCarthy and Dak. So you can forget that. We ain't getting rid of both okay. of them. You know, right. And, and 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 whether you like Dak or not, fifty nine million dollars say you love him. I got fifty nine million dollars say you love him, at least for another year. So that's right. what it is. So, and by the way, speaking of uh, the teacher that says there's no bad questions. How about the question they asked to Todd Bowles, that poor girl? <laughs> she goes through all this. Que- oh, hey, so it's 13 degrees in Detroit. How are you preparing your team to get ready for that terribly frigid weather? <laughs> well, they they play in a dome. Uh, it, we're only going to be about 20 seconds from the bus to the dome. We'll be fine. <laughs> he was nice about it, man. That poor thing. She's a viral now, that girl. That's a bad question, Nate. You, 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 that teacher was wrong. You know, it's a bad question. The, thing, the, the thing that hurts, it, uh, it was just an honest question. Uh, was she a media it was. type or was she just yeah. She was a media type asked that question? I think she was. I mean, she prepared, you know, bless her. And look, we've all brain farted out there. Say something like, oh, oh I knew God. that. Right. But she's looking at her phone going on. You see, on I'm looking quick. around because look I'm trying to find something to grab out of the outer defender. I'm about to do the Swiss yeah. of things. But sorry, sweetheart. You don't even know what you don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I, swear God, I swear to God, I don't know the poor thing. Yeah, but anyway, wow. uh, uh, that that was a bad question. But but the big question here really is. So, um, you know, we say you kind of need this big shift, but we can't really justify making that big move. I mean, I, I you know, can the Cowboys come back with essentially essentially status quo and and um, make anybody believe things will be different. I believe things will be different. Let me tell you something. I think I believe Thank it's you. two positions you have to fix. And I mean, you can't fix them Band-Aid style. And I'm talking down here to my mic, so I, I want you to hear me. Yeah. You can't fix them yeah, Band-Aid like style. You have to go out and get you a thumping linebacker. That when he hits or she hits, whatever it is, it yeah. stops. Yeah. It stops. It don't grab and hold and get drugged for two yards. Whenever this linebacker hits you, it stops you. And if he's a first and second down linebacker, I do not care. But you have to go out and get a linebacker that hits you and stops you. And you have to go out and get you an offensive lineman. I don't care if you draft it, and I don't care if it's free agency. You got to go out and get you another offensive lineman that's under 28 years old. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, then I think things will change. I, I think I think especially the point um, about the linebacker is so well taken because um, there was Green Bay right. eating up, as you mentioned already, almost eight minutes of the first quarter on the first drive. And Dak admitted afterwards, the whole time that's happening, he's sitting on the bench and his head is spinning, right? So there is your cause and effect, if you will, right? There is this happened and that caused this to happen. Happen. And consequently, you know, Dak came out and he just wasn't himself. And he, you know, and he never found himself in that entire game, in part 
because the defense couldn't get a stop when Green Bay took the ball to start the game, Nate. You know, and we we had we supposed to have had, had a great offense, a good offense. Yeah. But you know what's so sad about our offense is we so <laughs> smart to we to we uh, give that away. Green Bay didn't give their opportunity away. Green Bay like y'all y'all flip this coin. Y'all giving us the ball. We know y'all got 90,000 people here. We don't care. We going down yeah. and score because if we know if we get three points or even seven, that puts your defense in a quandary. Yeah. Our defense goes into a hyper drive when they, when they got to, when they, when they figure they got to stop the run and they scored. And then, and, 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 and I'm telling you, Matt LaFleur saying, uh oh, uh oh. They want to rush the passer. We gonna let them run it. See if they want to eat up this not eat up this Aaron Aaron Jones. Yeah. Or do they want number thirty one? Yeah. They didn't. AJ Dillon didn't even play. Yeah. Yeah. He had another kid number thirty one. I don't even remember his name. Yeah. So the the thing is, until you learn to play from behind, in front, or even, we can play in, from from in front. We can do that very very well. Even we okay, we five hundred from behind. We are losers. So until you learn how to play from all points of the game against equal or better talent, you are gonna always have this problem when you get to the playoffs because the playoff expo- exposes all of your flaws. Yeah, every one of them. Yeah, and it magnifies it to the second degree. So, since we're talking about Possibly a free agent lineman, possibly a free agent linebacker. They have to extend Dak, right? That's the only way to minimize that cap hit is to give him a contract extension and spread it out over years. So, you know, how long are we prepared to do that? How long are we prepared to have Dak be the guy? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know because... If they hire a new coach, that's the question they're going to ask the coach, and that's the question the coach should ask them. Right. When Jared them say, well, now we've told you what we expect, and we've asked you the questions we want to ask you. Do you have any questions, yeah. coach? He was like, yeah. I got a lot. You yeah. know, is Dak, yeah. Yeah, is Dak your man? Uh, can I go talk to uh, – to to Parsons and you know what I'm yeah. saying. What are you gonna do with CD Lamb? How you? I mean, it's like four or five guys that a coach would want to know how you want to handle this as an organization. It's only two or three guys, four or five guys that you would ask that question about, you know. And uh, it's no getting around it. I mean, Dak is, you know, this the elephant in the room. Now it's the bull. Bull elephant in the room with the, with the eighteen foot tusk mm-hmm. that's throwing everything mm-hmm. around, bro. That he is something different in the room. Yeah. At fifty nine million dollars, yeah. <laughs> that's a different yeah. elephant, bro. So we settled nothing, but, <laughs> so, uh, but, <laughs> oh, but yeah. I think obviously that's and that's sort of the game that Jerry Jones and, and Stephen Jones and, and Will McClay and everybody who's involved in that decision-making, that's the game they play the week after a loss like this, isn't it? These are huge decisions. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 no. That is the game that is played after a playoff loss. No, no, this is not after just a game. Yeah. This is a first-round Three, two years in a row, exit. Yeah. It, see, this, and, and people say, no, they, they, they went to the second game last year. No, 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 no. You won the first game. You lost the second game. So you're still on the first game. You have to actually win the second game before you have a second round exit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? And that exit only exits to a win. See, now that's twisted thinking by Nate Newton, <laughs> who don't like losing and ain't going to accept it. Y'all can think how y'all want, and that's that crazy thing where the teacher said there's no wrong answer. Well, I just gave you a wrong answer, but I'm sticking to that answer. 
I appreciate that, Nate. I appreciate Niagara. <laughs> I appreciate the whole season we've had. I, yes. I wish we had lots more Cowboys yes. football to talk about this season, Nate, but we don't. We don't. <clears throat> Give us about two yeah. weeks, and we'll be definitely back. Yeah. We may take a little yeah. break with the playoffs, me and, me and Rad, and I think we're in a, in a big transition, and we'll have some other things to talk about here soon that's very helpful for the fans and ourselves so just bear with us here we you may see us next week and you may not but niagara we love you we've we've enjoyed your sponsorship and and i've enjoyed rad man he's a he's he's sunshine yeah. we can just get rid of the lions oh man i can't do it i i was just gonna end it with go lions <laughs> but i'll also say i love you nate it's been fun <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. I ain't going near you for a minute till whatever yeah. happens to the Lions because yeah. I don't want to get that. I want to take that whooping. Uh, so and and you know I like y'all head yeah, coach. Yeah. Love your head yeah. coach. So all right, all right, my brother. We'll talk soon. It's been so much fun, and uh, yeah, well, I can't wait for you to tell me something again. Yes, sir. Y'all be good. God bless you. Happy New Year. <laughs>